Hello and welcome back to our refactoring of Martin Fowler's simple movie rental example. In the last episodes we mainly concerned ourselves with a customer class where we broke down the big statement method, uh, factored out some logic and in the end we were able to produce an HTML statement output without too much duplication, at least without duplication in the computation logic of both the charge and the frequent renter points. And in this episode, I want to uh, focus more on the rental class. We've moved some of the logic from our statement computation over here to the rental class because I figured that it belongs here. Unfortunately, I'm still not content with the state of this code. One thing I stated before is that I don't really like this big switch block here. In fact, I don't like switch blocks at all. But for the time being, let's uh, consider some other points that are not directly related to it being a switch block. The reason I don't like this code here is because the branching it does actually depends on information from some other class. Namely, the movie class or the movie object we have here and the press code that is somewhere handled on that movie instance. And what this means is that if I ever going to change the price code semantics in the future, like introduce another price code like horror movie or something, then I'm likely to miss out this code depending on this price code. And I'm likely going to miss doing the respective changes to this code. So for this reason, I would like to move this price computation logic over to the movie class so that if I change this price code semantics, I see this code depending on it and uh, am able to easily adjust it. So let's factor this out. So one way to move the computation over to the movie class would be to again move the whole method. But actually that's a very bad idea because as you might remember, refactoring is about changing the implementation of some class without changing its API. And the get charge method of the rental class is actually part of the API of the rental class, so we should not remove it. The implications if we would do this, uh, we can actually easily see from the refactoring preview, and I'm going to show that to you real quick. So if I move over the get charge method to the movie class, a preview here and make this a little bigger for you guys to see, is actually going to change a client of the rental class, namely the customer class. And as you can see here, it's going to change the call of each get charge to each get movie get charge this. First of all, this is wrong because Eclipse messes up this refactoring. Uh, this, this identifier here, the keyword should actually be each because what I'm handing into the charge is the rental, not the customer. But even if I had this correctly, it would be each, get movie, get charge each. So each is both the recipient of the first call and a parameter to the last call, which is already quite strange. And then we would have this long expression here um, and would need customer to know actually about implementation details of the rental, namely that there is a movie instance in there somewhere and that we can get the charge on that movie instance. That's not what we want. So let's go back and consider an alternative option. We want the API of the rental class to stay the same, so we could use this keep original method as delegate to move methods option down here. And we're again going to use the preview to see what's actually going to happen. One thing we immediately realize if we look at the list up here is that the customer class is not going to change anymore. So we succeeded in preventing changes to the clients of the rental class. Another thing we see is that in the rental class, the computation logic was removed and was replaced by call to movie. One thing I don't like about this is that uh, the parameter to this computation is actually the whole rental. So the movie class now knows about rentals, which is unnecessary. Let's have a look at why it thinks it needs the rental. First of all, it accesses rental get movie. This is completely unnecessary because the movie from the rental is actually the very same movie instance we're in here, so we could just replace this by this. The second information we actually need in this computation is the rental get days rented. And since this is the only information, 
I would like to pass this integer value in here as a parameter instead of the whole rental. Unfortunately, there's no option for this in the move refactoring, so we have to do some manual work here. In order to do the extraction of the price calculation logic with as few errors as possible, I want to rely on Eclipse's automatic refactorings as much as possible. So, in order to prepare this extraction, I'm going to first extract the information that I want to hand in instead of them being queried from the rental instance. First thing we've seen is the get days rented information, so I'm going to create a local variable for that one. Fortunately, Eclipse is smart enough to replace all the query calls at once, so I'm going to move that to the start of the method because I want it to stay here. And the second thing I want to factor out is this get movie query here, so I'm going to create another local variable movie2, move that up to the beginning too. And then I'm going to factor out this price calculation logic here, which now depends on my two temporal variables I've introduced. I'm going to first extract a new method for this logic, which is which gets in the movie as a first parameter and the um, get days rented, the number of days rented as a second parameter. I'm going to call this one get charge um, as original method. And now I'm going to move this new method over to the movie class. I want to make sure that I select this local uh, temp variable I just created here as a possibility because if I don't do that um, he will actually pass in the movie instance. So I'm going to select this variable and then apply the refactoring. It's going to warn me that he's going to change the private visibility of the method to package which is fine with me. I'm going to move that over. Okay and now we see that we have here the call to movie get charge and hand in the days rented. Now I'm going to get rid of these um, temporal variables again by doing some inlining of this get movie accessor call and the get days rented accessor call so that I have um, the, the chain of calls here get movie, get charge, get days rented as I want it to be. Save that real quick, have a look at the method I've extracted. This one now calls get price on the instance we're in and gets in at get days rented, which I'm going to rename to number of days rented. That's done so far, so I'm going to re-execute the test real quick to see that nothing broke. Indeed, nothing broke, so we're done for this time with the get charge method. Next thing I'm going to do is apply the very same refactoring to the get frequent rent point method. Again, I'm going to factor out the accessor of get movie and the accessor of get days rented here. I'm going to extract a local method real quick, which I'm going to call get frequent rented points. And then I'm going to move over this method again uh, with the instance selected here to the movie class. Again, warning about the change visibility, that's fine with me. Call looks good, so I can inline these two uh, temp variables here. Now the call down here looks quite similar to the call up there. If I go to the movie method, I have again a new method here, whose parameter I'm going to rename to number of days rented. Okay, so with this step we successfully extracted and moved over the price calculation logic to the movie class, so we have it right next to uh, the definition of these movie types. And whenever we change them, we hopefully uh, see the dependence on these types and the price calculation and the frequent rent upon calculation down here and change it alongside. Okay, this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. You might also want to have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing and give me feedback about what you think. Thanks a lot for watching again and hope to see you next time.